The new Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus chips are here, and they prove to be competitive in both battery life and performance to other chips in the market. The new Microsoft Surface Pro Copilot Plus laptops come in both the X Elite and X Plus variants. But the question is whether or not it's worth forking over the extra $500 for the X Elite model. The more expensive SKU also comes equipped with a larger 512 gig SSD and an OLED display, as opposed to the 256 gigabyte SSD and LCD on our X Plus Surface Pro. So that's obviously some of the price difference as well here. The two systems also have 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory at 8448 megatransfers per second. But the advantage of using Surface Pros is that we're keeping most other things equal. Thermal environment and heat dissipation will actually play a significant role in how these things perform, as we'll discuss in a bit. So making sure those are equal in the comparison was pretty important. But Snapdragon actually offers four models of X Elite, differing by GPU performance and CPU boost frequency. The specific X Elite Microsoft has included in this model has 12 cores at up to 3.4 gigahertz multi-core and up to 4.0 gigahertz dual core boost. Its little brother, the X Plus, has 10 cores and only boosts up to 3.4 gigahertz. No dual core extra boost happening on the Plus variant. Qualcomm also advertises that both chips come ready for AI workloads, packing a 45 tops neural processing unit in both models, so they're exactly the same. But we can break this down into just a few key points here between the X Elite and the X Plus. Overall, the performance difference is minimal between the two chips. Single-threaded performance is roughly 15% faster on the X Elite on average, whereas multi-threaded performance settles at just under 10% different. The GPUs perform identically when you hit them exclusively, and the $500 price hike over the X Plus model seems less than justified. But let's get into the details and why, because both machines are snappy and responsive with enough memory and processor performance to handle the tasks most users are buying a thin and light for. Looking to their competitors, even the Snapdragon X Plus scores above the Intel Core Ultra 7 1555H in CPU tests. I mentioned this chip because there are several two-in-one devices around the $1,000 price point that feature it. The problems then arise when we try to run apps not meant for ARM-based silicon. You've got things like Audacity, which technically supports ARM and runs seemingly fine, but then attempting to install the OpenVINO AI plugin falls flat. And then you've got all of those AI features that Microsoft launched with Copilot Plus that are restricted to these Qualcomm devices that aren't much to write home about. A lot of it isn't even process locally on the device. Things like Microsoft Paint sends that off to the cloud anyways, and Recall went the way of the Arnold Schwarzenegger film. But the weird support on software and how it's performing continues into gaming performance, where we see many popular titles outright refusing to launch on these ARM chips. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, however, in games that do run, the Snapdragon chips can put out reasonable average frame rates in AAA titles. The problem is the visual artifacting and stuttering that's present in some games that do run. So getting a game to run does not ensure it runs properly. Go figure. For example, while playing The Witcher 3, some pretty gross artifacts flashed on screen, huge black splotches that made an even more unpleasant experience on top of the frame stuttering. You can watch this video I already made about playing games on a Galaxy Book 4 Edge, which has the same X Elite chip as this higher end Surface Pro we're using. A bunch of games don't work. Doom Eternal loses its marbles and overall, it's mostly a poor showcase for an integrated GPU in 2024, especially when the Ryzen AI 300 chips are supposed to launch in less than a week as of the time of filming. But oddly enough, the X Plus consistently pulls slightly ahead of its bigger brother in gaming, as the X Elite appears to be running at least a few degrees hotter, throttling its performance and lowering its clock speeds. The GPUs that are included are technically identical and do perform exactly the same until you play a game that hits both the CPU and GPU. When power consumption is high, everything heats up, so the power-hungry X Elite begins to fall behind. In Counter-Strike 2, however, I saw the X Elite pull ahead significantly. I'm betting this is because the CPU is able to boost much higher while the GPU stays cool, allowing it to do so. The Counter-Strike games are notoriously single-thread dependent, so the higher dual-core boost of the X Elite is taken advantage of here. So, in thermally constrained scenarios, the two chips 
often trade blows. Now in battery life, the X Plus model has a 47 watt hour battery, whereas the X Elite packs 53 watt hours. However, our battery life tests indicate that what you gain in CPU horsepower on the X Elite, you may lose in battery life. For both YouTube playback and idle power draw tests, we saw the X Plus chip ahead by around 15% in total battery life. In the 30 minute Cinebench loop we ran, the X Elite only dropped to 75% while the X Plus got to down to 70%. So that's 14 watt hours lost in 30 minutes for the X Plus and 13.25 for the X Elite. This makes sense when considering thermals as the X Elite does throttle to or even below the clock speeds of the X Plus when pushed for long enough. The performance difference remains about the same between the two devices, whether you're plugged in or on battery. So there's no real difference there. If I were in the market for a new Microsoft Surface Pro or similar notebook, I wouldn't rule out the new Snapdragon devices, but I'd certainly do my research on whether or not the apps I will use will even run on them. Am I using CPU or GPU tasks? And do I want to spend 500 extra bucks for just a prettier screen? Battery life can be great, especially if you're just watching YouTube videos. Higher performance tasks will definitely drain a lot quicker, knocking them down to being closer to their Intel and AMD counterparts though. And overall, it's just a bit of a mixed bag for the comparison between the X Plus and the X Elite. They perform close in the applications that they suck at, namely graphically intense ones. But the X Elite loses sometimes because these thin and light notebooks can sometimes sacrifice cooling for the sake of portability, like here with the Surface Pro. And that appears to mean, at least in this case, you're paying the extra 50% in price for the OLED screen and the higher capacity SSD, not necessarily for the better performance or increased battery life. But that also puts the X Plus in a weird position because while it's only an LCD panel and has just 256 gigs of storage, that makes it more expensive than the current AMD Ryzen based laptops where you can match the RAM amount, but get significantly better graphics performance okay battery life, but quadruple the storage for $100 less. And then you can also find a MacBook Air for the same price on sale often, and that will match or exceed the X Plus in battery life and performance in many instances. The only wrinkle there is that you have the Apple's eight gigabytes of RAM floor, but that's an entirely different conversation. There's space for these laptops in the current market, but it's in between all of the surrounding offerings. This doesn't appear to be the Apple Apple Silicon moment for Windows laptops. The X Plus chip is fine, not really that cut down from the X Elite, but its price is much higher than laptops that can run circles around it in graphical applications and software support, and it directly competes with the most popular laptop on the market in the MacBook Air. The X Elite appears to be a significant improvement in CPU performance, but offers little else above the plus besides maybe more thermal concerns for the long term and costs significantly more than, again, competitors that are out there. I currently have my Ryzen AI H365 notebook on route to the office for testing ahead of next week's launch. And knowing that it's supposed to come in cheaper than most X Elite laptops and have all of the MPU enhancements, GPU and CPU upgrades, and have full software support, I really can't see these Snapdragon offerings being more than, yeah, they're good, but in the current ecosystem. It's a real shame that Microsoft pumped all of their marketing dollars into these Qualcomm laptops because while they're good, I'm more excited for the entire set of new laptops being launched more than I am just for the X Plus or the X Elite. And so if you are going X Elite and trying to spend the extra money to get a better laptop, I would suggest maybe skipping the Surface Pro and getting something with a more active cooling setup, something like the Galaxy Book 4 Edge that we tested games out on in a previous video. That that's going to allow you to have better thermals. But again, you're still in a very thin and light situation. The X Plus isn't bad for its price, but it also doesn't stand apart enough for me to wholeheartedly recommend it either. So it's just gonna depend on what you need for your situation.